Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And I have a special guest today. So moms, dads, parents, teachers, whoever, if you're listening today and you're an adult, I want you to know this is for you, but really it's for your kids. This is for young people. Why? Because my guest today is a podcaster. She's 18 years old. She's been doing her podcast since 2022. She's two years into it. Her name is uh, Nadine. Uh, you know, I, I hope I say your last name right, right? Lawfer. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I said it right. Okay. That's awesome. So Nadine uh, uh, lives in Pennsylvania. She grew up in the Florida area. She's been homeschooling herself um, for about the last eight years. And we'll have her tell you a little bit about her, her journey as a homeschooler. But then she decided to start a podcast and she wanted to start a podcast really to inspire young people and inspire teens that are homeschooling about what it's like to be homeschooled and different things you can do and resources you can find and, you know, all the different things about what it's like to be homeschooled. And, you know, cause sometimes when you're, when you're, you know, when you're, you're at home and you're kind of thinking, oh my gosh, I'm kind of all, all on my own. Right. And what would it be like to have somebody to kind of have a friend out there? And here's Nadine who comes on and shares with you and she interviews curriculum developers. So she's always talking about other kinds of curriculum. And so she might have some ideas for moms. If you're interested in curriculum, hearing it from a young person who's done it, what better way is there to get a good recommendation of a curriculum than from the young person themselves who've done the course themselves? So it's really, really great. And Nadine and I met at the Great Homeschool Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. So Nadine, I don't know, I think I told you, but you know, I have, I, I call it, I don't know what other people call it, but I call it, I have what's called booth ADD, which just means that for me to stay in my booth for very long is not a good idea. So we have our staff come with us too. And so I wander around and go out and meet people, but I'm always looking for people that we could have come on the podcast. And I met you and I was like, oh my gosh, what you're doing is so cool. And that's, so that's how we got to meet. And you, you got to speak this year at the great homeschool mm -hmm. convention. I think it was your first time there, which is awesome. So just super cool. Um, okay. So for, now I know people are already like, well, all right, well, how do we find her? They're ready to go to your, to your site and here it is. So it's called HS, and I asked her how, you, how why we have it this way. It's hshighschoolpodcast.buzzsport.com. And the HS, of course, is homeschool. So we're going to have that in the show notes for you. So you can click to it. You can get there. She has an Instagram channel as an Instagram uh, channel as well. But you can get to her Instagram channel from the website because the Instagram name is a little bit long. Yes. So just go on the, yeah, but go on her website and you can, uh, from the uh, podcast site, then you can get to and you can find some of her other social media. So let's see, Nadine, anything I left out about you and who you are in the world? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, that's awesome. Okay, well, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, you're 18 years old now, you've been doing the podcasting for a couple of years, but kind of walk us through how did you end up becoming a homeschooler? Like, mm -hmm. what's your journey that led you to homeschooling? Yeah, so it started about eight years ago uh, when I was in fifth grade and our school in Florida was right next to the third fastest growing community in the country. And so they couldn't build schools fast enough. Our public school became incredibly overpopulated. And so my parents were like, I don't think this is gonna get any better. We actually had a pretty good public school experience. We were very blessed with the teachers we had. Obviously there was already some things I noticed about it that I didn't necessarily like. The community that I had of friends, um, it, there was a lot of peer pressure and things like that. Even in fourth grade, I noticed it. But um, a group of our friends and their parents started a co-op at our local church. So it was actually perfect for my parents to kind of join homeschooling. It was their first, I don't know, experience with homeschooling besides just the few people they've met in college who were kind of weird. So it was, it was a new <laughs> opportunity for them um, to get started and with our friends. So we didn't lose a lot of friendships when we left school. It was pretty smooth tr transition and we just kind of fell in love with homeschooling and we've been doing it ever since then. Um, kind of when we moved out to Pennsylvania though, we stopped doing a co-op. There were no co-ops around us. So we started doing just what I would call strict homeschooling where you're at home most of the time. And uh, that's I think when we really started to love homeschooling because we really got to explore the, the uniqueness of it. And if we, you know, we got to be more interest led, I think, and figure out what curriculums worked well for us without having someone telling us what to do all the time. So uh, even in a co-op setting, that was, it just opened us to the real freedom, I think, from homeschooling at a different, a deeper level. And so, you know, we've been doing it like that ever since, and we absolutely love it. Oh, that's so great. Okay. Now you have a younger sibling. Is yes. it a brother or sister? A sister. Okay. And so did you, do you guys both come home at the same time or how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. She was in second grade. Okay. So she really doesn't remember much of life outside of homeschooling. 
I think. Um, right. Yeah, but she's never looked back either. I think whenever you come from a school, I've seen this with a lot of lifelong homeschoolers, they don't really know what it's like to be in school. So they kind of always wonder. So I think I have, we have a very unique perspective because um, we do know what it was like in school. We know what we're really missing out on and it's not as, I don't know, unknown as, as sometimes it is for other homeschoolers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't looked back. So mm -hmm. there you, there you go. Just if you happen to be thinking about, hmm, I wonder if I should check this out here, you can have somebody that said, yeah, no, maybe not a good idea. Right. So that's awesome. Okay. Well, so, you know, you've, you know, I've seen, uh, you've got interviews with Andrew Poudwa, you've got interviews with David Shorman, the Shorman math program. Um, let's see. Oh, Nate. Uh, I know Nate, uh, Nate, mm, uh, yeah. last, um, the, he, they have such a cool program that they mm. do and, you know, kind of experiencing like geography and history and, you know, all the different things that they yeah. do with super cool. Um, so, you know, when people are on there, like you're interviewing some really top people, uh, by the way, Andrew Poudwa, IEW, if you're not, not familiar with, uh, with Mr. Poudwa, why right? he's, he's kind of the king of, we can, there's a the king of rock and roll. There's a the king of, of uh, language arts, right? And there's uh, Andrew Poudwa. So there you go. So, you know, when you, you know, when you started to come uh, get to the idea about doing a podcast, by the way, you speak so well, so you're perfect for doing this kind of thing. Right. So it's great. Um, what led you to kind of think about, hey, you know what? I want to start a podcast. Like, how did you get into this? Well, it's actually, it was, very, I, looking back, I don't really remember specifically when I decided to do a podcast. It was the summer of my junior year when my dad first challenged me. I don't know if I was talking about homeschooling or what, but he was like, you should, you know, you love homeschooling. You should use that to help other homeschoolers. And so that was kind of sitting in the back of my brain. I don't know how I was like, oh, I should start a podcast. It was just something random. I don't know. I didn't really even listen to podcasts. So <laughs> it was just the medium I decided to try to inspire other teens through just happened to be podcasting. Um, so that's kind of how I, I just researched it all summer. And then I started it in November of 2022, so my junior year, and uh, been doing it ever since then. But it was it was kind of an interesting process. I'm not entirely sure where it started. <laughs> right. That's really cool, though. So kind of a challenge from dad. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Like, how do you get the message out to like share with others about the opportunities? You know, it's, it's great because in you sharing that too, it's like, you know, even like we brought our kids home, they were about your age, like grade, you know, grade two and four. And we brought them home and, you know, and everybody we knew is so funny, right? Why are you doing that? Right, 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 right. And then what we get today now is like, how can we do what you're doing? Right. Because now yeah. it's like, you travel all the time, you live internationally, you do all these super cool things, right? So they want to know all these different things about what we do. And it's like, homeschooling is really cool. And so, you know, we keep sharing with people, but for you, for your dad to challenge you like that, and for you to find your way into podcasting, just what a great fit. So that's so mm -hmm. awesome. How, how do you go about finding your guests? Like, how do you, um, you know, because I know you, you, I'm going to take a guess, you probably like you've talked to homeschoolers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you interview curriculum people. Do you do anything where it's just you or is it typically in that interview style? Like for me, it's like I like I did it a long time ago where I was talking and I was talking about math and I realized it's like I was boring myself, you know, so I'm like, oh my God, if I'm not even if I'm not even interested in what I'm saying, it's like, yeah, we got to look at something different. So now we shifted over to just doing these interview styles like this. But tell us a little bit about your format of your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I started off, I think a first few episodes were just me. I think it's just talking about homeschooling, kind of introducing. I had no idea what I was doing, just to preface this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I got a book, um, like, it was this thick. It was huge. I still haven't finished it, but they were like, yeah, you need to know what your style is, what you're going to do. And I was reading it, like, I don't know, three months into podcasting. Like, I had no idea what I was doing at the beginning. Um, but I did love my community so much. I had so many good friends who were so excited about homeschooling that I was like, you know what, I'll just start there. So I just reached out to them. And they graciously came on and I was, you know, still figuring it out. So I didn't know what I was doing interviewing wise either. And I still don't at this point, but um, they, they came and they, they talked about homeschooling. And then I did my mom for a few episodes, my sister, just kind of starting there. And then as for like the most recent ones, um, I've been meeting a lot of other homeschoolers through the internet. I find someone on Instagram that's doing something really cool. And I'll be like, hey, you know, would you like to talk about it on the podcast and give them a platform to to explain why they love homeschooling, to talk about what they're doing. Um, I don't know, the, the things that have advanced our homeschooling experience so much is we we look at other homeschoolers and we find someone who's doing something and they're successful and we ask them how, we're do how they're doing it. So that's kind of been in the back of my mind. As I approach interviews, I find successful homeschoolers and I just want to ask them, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Why are you doing it? To give other people 
this sort of place to get connected and inspired. Um, but, and then for like Mr. Pudewa, I just, <laughs> I actually met him at the convention last year okay. and uh, talked about my podcast to him. And he was like, he mentioned that he would, you know, listen to an episode. Um, and, and then I just found his email and I emailed him and I was like, Hey, you know, we, we met last year. Would you like to be on the podcast? And that's what I did for Mr. Shorman, um, explaining how, you know, their curriculum has impacted my life as well and uh, wanting other people to know about it. So that's kind of how I go about my interviews, always with the, in, you know, in mind to inspire other people to continue homeschooling through high school. Right, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great too, because when you find somebody that's doing something really cool, I'm gonna take a guess that when you've reached out to people, very rarely, if at all, that people say, oh no, I don't wanna do that, right? They're mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah, I wanna come on, I wanna tell you what I'm doing, right? And people mm -hmm. love to be able to share what they're up to. and because it makes a difference. So, you know, when you got all this started, right? And kind of like, if you look now, you've been doing this for two years. If you look for, what was it that got you interested? Like your dad kind of made the challenge about sharing, you know, what it, you know, giving your voice to homeschooling, right? So if you look now, two years into this now, what do you think, like, how do you think that you could, like your accomplishments by doing podcasting, um, what do you intend to really accomplish now that you're kind of into this and have figured it out? <laughs> and I want you to know you have figured it out. Except oh. the, here's how I know you figured it out. Cause you figured it out. Cause first of all, I checked out some of your podcasts and they're awesome. Right. Oh, thank and you. you speak so well and you're just, you know, you're just very genuine. Right. So you have everything that, it, that there's needed and wanted. And when it comes to putting together a great podcast, right. So, so you, when somebody tells you you're great at this, you just say thank you, right? <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, but uh, tell us, like, you know, what are you up to now? Like, what do you intend to accomplish out of all this? You've been in it for two years now. So kind of where do you see your things heading? So uh, I actually forgot to tell this story, but this was another very impactful thing in the life of the podcast. It was, I think it was about a month in when I started and I went to a youth group with a friend of mine at a church I didn't, I didn't go to, but she was, she didn't have any friends coming with her. So we went with her. And uh, I was in a breakout session with about six other girls and they were all conventional schoolers. And they all attended this very, you know, I don't know, it was, it was a nice area, it was a sought after school. Um, and I had for a while been kind of separated from the public school, conventional school world because I moved up here in a rural area and I pretty much interact with homeschoolers most of the time. Um, but there were stories they were telling me about their experiences in school were kind of shocking to me, honestly. It's become, I think, a lot worse since I was there, social environment wise. I mean, they were struggling with some pretty bad friendships and friends who were walking through really dark things. And, and it's all like, in my opinion, uh, it, like life is, you know, we're supposed to be able to handle hard things. So as homeschoolers, we do overcome challenges and maybe bad friendships or whatever. Maybe we do uh, encounter those things, but the social environment that's in school is just not, it's, it's, it's just a natural, it's an unnatural social environment. So uh, no one really talked about other options potentially for them. And they weren't thriving either. Like none of those girls, I would say, were thriving. And everyone in my community as a homeschooler, in contrast, they were thriving. And so I was like, no one talked about another option potentially. And like if I would have said, oh, you know, you could homeschool, they probably would have all come back with, well, you know, we'd miss out on everything. And, and I would, you know, it's just there's a lot of stigmas and stereotypes surrounding homeschooling. So I think that was a moment where I was like, okay, well, if I could get more, the best way to fight against the stereotypes is, is stories, real life experiences. So if I can get more teens to share their experience, and if we can get the homeschoolers more excited about homeschooling to overcome some of those stereotypes, just by the way we live, the way we act, the way we talk about homeschooling, then hopefully we'll be able to reach more students who are maybe awake to the system to the, I don't know, the brokenness sometimes of the system to maybe want to homeschool and to start um, reaching other people like that. So that's been in the back of my mind as well. But I, I, I try to like direct my audience straight towards that purpose and I never could reach it because I always kept reaching homeschoolers. And until I realized that that's the need though, is because we sometimes live in this fear, missing out sort of our experience is second rate compared to the public school. Um, so to encourage the homeschoolers, therefore reaching the rest of the public school community with what homeschooling really is, became my ultimate goal. So that's kind of where I am now. I always say encouraging people to be fearlessly, encouraging students to be fearlessly different because 
um, I feel like sometimes we're not. And uh, there's so much beauty in our experience. And I was listening to an episode of your podcast. Um, I forget the girl's name, but she lives in Africa, I think. Mm -hmm. She, uh, yeah. And just her right. experience is so amazing and incredible. It's so different from tr traditional schooling. Right. But there's so much beauty and so much value in it. And if we could just continue to share stories like that um, to inspire us to do something completely different, uh, but just as cool, maybe even cooler, you know, it's just that sort of thing has been the driving force behind the podcast. Yeah. You're so you're so right. And, you know, it's amazing when you talk to homeschoolers and you hear about things that they're up to in their life. You know, you would never think about people living in other countries, being like the girl from Africa and she, you know, in her mission and what she does her day to day mm -hmm. life and what that's like for her. Here you are, part of what your high school experience is what? Well, you started a podcast and here you are and you're out in the world and you're, you know, interviewing people and learning how to do what? How to go out and meet people that you don't know, mm -hmm. how to do research, how to how to put together interviews. Um, you're learning the, the whole world of the technical side of what podcasting is and how it all works. So, I mean, it's just so many opportunities that we have. And, you know, one of the things that I, that I always uh, have loved about the world of homeschooling is that it allows you to do what you love to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and it sounds like your dad was has been like that with you too. It's like, well, what really like, you know, what really lights you up about homeschooling? And and that's where you that's where you can focus your attention, which is awesome. And you know, in my day when I grew up, and probably your dad, your dad's probably sharing this with you because you know, when we were young, we weren't encouraged to do that. What we were encouraged mm -hmm. to do was, you know, you go to school, you go to college, you get a job. And then the things that you really love to do, we call those your hobbies, right? So, <laughs> but it doesn't, in today's world, it's really not like that. And, you know, for homeschooling, it makes available the opportunity for people to really find those things they love to do and then dive right into it, which is yes. awesome. You know, it's really cool. You know, it's fat, It's funny. I've, I've been doing some research on, you know, on colleges and businesses and things like that. And one of the trends in business right now is kind of moving away from people with college degrees. There was an article we just saw about Walmart and Walmart and whether you like Walmart or don't like Walmart, whatever, but, you know, but what they're doing is they're opting out to bring people in and train them instead of them going to college and then they get out of college and then they still have to train them anyway for the kinds of things they want to do, mm -hmm. but they're training them in cool things like robotics and they're training them in um, pharmaceutical, like working in the, um, you know, in the pharmacies. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow, that's cool. And one of the things they said in the article was that what, you know, they know that they're going to do this training and not everybody's going to stay, you know, but some people will stay with Walmart and some won't. But what they are providing is they're providing the training mm -hmm. so that the training is what leaves. And I'm like, wow, that's just like, for me, that was really impactful to hear that because, you don't hear that from business very often where they're actually interested in making that kind of a difference in our homeschoolers. That's all we're interested in. Right. You yeah. Know, well, you know, a lot of businesses will tell you too. no, no, we are interested in making a difference, but, but here you can see it and just tangible and you can kind of touch it to hear, you know, what they're doing. So, okay. So let's look, you know, so, you know, there's obviously, you know, concerns that people have about high school, right. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes yeah. we hear, you know, kids will say, well, I want to do homeschooling until I get to middle school. And, you know, even sometimes parents will look and especially like in my world, they come to me and they're like, yeah, dude, we're not doing geometry. We don't do algebra two. We're definitely not doing calculus. So hands off. And so they start to think, well, maybe it's time to send them back to school. But mm -hmm. what, what do you look at as some of the main concerns that parents might see, students might see expressing about their high school, their high school, uh, you know, because there's the social side, there's the academic side, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. What do you what have you noticed and what do you see are some of the main concerns for, that you've seen? Uh, there's definitely a lot of them, um, but I I do see this trend of families who are like, oh, we homeschool up to eighth grade and then we don't homeschool anymore. And I wish uh, I met a lot of them actually at the convention and I wanted to, looking back, I wish I would have said, oh, why? I want to ask them why specifically, but I think the underlying concern is just success. I think that is what, that was the concern for my mom and me whenever we entered high school. I remember eighth grade was the end of eighth grade. I was just like, oh my goodness, next year's high school. Like it just felt like this big thing that we didn't really know how to navigate. And my mom was always concerned with like, am I doing enough? You know, is this going to be enough to get into college or whatever it may be like that we're going to mess up somehow. And it is, you know, high school for a long time has been like a launch pad, I think um, that we're building. And if we don't build correctly, then we might not be able to get where we want to go. At least that's my, that's how I think about it. Um, in, in terms of how we approach homeschooling in high school. And so I think that's the main over, over uh, arching concern. Uh, and, and to address that though, 
Um, it's, I mean, it's very individual. It's very specific to each person, but uh, success is, it can look different. Um, like in school, it's very, it's, it's drawn out. Like uh, getting into college is one of the main things we you know to success. And there's so many homeschoolers who have done that successfully. I mean, I'm one of them and I didn't, you know, jump on the whole, uh, a, I don't know, SAT prep book or whatever it may be that I see a lot right. of time floating around the convention, like all these things that like you're going to mess up your kid if you don't do this or that or the <laughs> other. And my mom, the, that was the first thing she ever went to at a great homeschool conventions was one of those talks. And she left like kind of terrified, like, oh, no, oh, I oh. messed up already. And uh, so uh, she likes to talk about that specifically to parents. Like, it's OK. You, you know, they're try well, obviously trying to sell you, sell you something. But if you have a good math program, you're prepared for the SAT for sure. Right, but, right. Um, you know, it it's, there's more to success in high school than just that. And I see a lot of homeschoolers, it, there's so much freedom and flexibility in the younger ages. And we pursue that, you know, open, uh, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> we, we pursue it without any hesitation because we right. know um, that's, there's so much value in that. But when we hit high school, I feel like everyone's like, okay, how close can we get to conventional schooling? to make everything, even the, the way the school day operates, like how close right. can we get? And we lose a lot of that freedom. And I was tempted as a student to do that because I didn't have anything else to structure high school off of. So I was just like, okay, well, if they're in school from 7.30 to, to three, then I must be. And if I wake up later, then I'm already behind everyone else. And so that was my first years of high school and it was not fun at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something that my parents didn't do that to me. It was because, you know, whenever you homeschool, your education becomes the student's responsibility in some ways, especially in high school. So that was my own initiative, that structure. And uh, it was it was not there was no freedom in that. I lost a lot of it from from when I was in eighth grade and, I, and seventh grade. Um, but it was, it was, you know, this once it was actually Mr. Pudua who said it, um, you know, homeschooling is not conventional schooling from home we're doing something different on purpose. And that just totally flipped my attitude. And mm -hmm. even my attitude towards what success ultimately looks like, does it look, uh, you know, more towards what the word says success should be versus what the system says success should be. And obviously, you know, school subjects are important, everything, we do that sort of thing, but they're not right. our ultimate. There's so much more we can do. Um, I think you know, this podcast, for example, is something that is not normal but it can work very well into the transcript. It can work very well into my classes, but it allows me to use my different experience to therefore make a difference in you know the world around me. So there's so much more outside of the typical high school experience. That's what I always tell people whenever we address success. Obviously we have successful homeschoolers. If you work hard, put your effort in, you know, you will get where you want to go, but that's, that's where it is. And there's so much to look outside. I challenge people to look outside of the conventional schooling idea of success whenever we structure high school, if that makes sense at all. Yeah, that makes total sense. You know, and, and it's funny because it's like, okay, well, where did you get, where do people get that from, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, where where do parents get, well, what's high school supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> where they're looking back is, yeah. no offense, parents, but you're looking back some of you 20, 30, you know, plus years in what your high school experience was. So mm -hmm. you're looking from a past that is nothing like the way today is, you know, in today's in today's world and, and what's available and the things mm -hmm. that people do. And, uh, you know, and it's funny because it's like I was mentioning about, you know, about Walmart and people, they're saying, well, we're going to train people instead. And uh, my daughter is, she's a year younger than you are. And she, um, she said, she goes, she goes, you know, dad, she goes, I think I'm done with high school. <laughs> said, really? Well, what does that mean? She goes, well, she goes, let's look. And so we looked at all her credits and she had plenty of credits and she had clept out of some, she'd taken some college yeah. credits and she clept out and she'd already had college credits. And I was like, all right, sweetheart, well, well what do you want to do? And she goes, I, I do want to go to college. But her experience in college is she wants to go to college in France, right? That's her thing. I said, well, you got a couple of years because, you know, you got you know, a few more years where you can be a little more independent to live on your own. Mm -hmm. But she found a college. And so she did that. She found a college that has a campus in, in Paris, France, but it's based in Florida. So she applies to the college and they said, well, you know, are you ready to graduate? Yep. We can graduate her now early. And, you know, and so you know, for her. And then she went and she said, Hey, dad, they got a, uh, you know, they got this essay program and I can get a scholarship. I was like, hey, you go for it, sweetheart. Right. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, she writes an essay about being a global citizen and she got a 50% scholarship. Then she starts wow. college. Well, right. And, yeah. she, and the college said, but we can't have her start yet because we're not used to having people under 18 start college. And they said, we've got to do some background checks and stuff with our own staff before we can admit somebody. 
under 18. And, I, and we're like, yeah, okay. So then I said to our daughter, I said, well, so what are you going to do? And she goes, well, I, I could get a job, right? So she got an internship with a company that does event planning, right? And so, and the, and the owner of the company is like, where do I find more of these kids? You know, because he's got six interns that work for him. And they're all, you know, young people that are, you know, in between that high school and college, you know, they're making that transition in college. And he he said, this has been his best intern he's ever had ever. And, you know, and it's funny because it's like, you look back and like, well, what is it that she's got? She's a homeschooler. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, she's got the way to communicate. She's got the, the the ability to be able to stay on task and do the things that need to get done. She knows how to work her own schedule. And that's huge because... Mm-hmm. So she she's like you. She just she likes to sleep in, right? And so even if she so she makes her schedule work so that she can sleep in, and then she goes and does her you know does her work during the day. So it's just really awesome. And you hear all the different things that are that are out there and available to people. And it really is like you said. It's like what if you look beyond what's traditional? What is it? What is it really? What does it look like? And what do you you know? For me, it's always been about well, what do you love to do? And if you're doing that. What else is there, right? That's for me, that's my definition of success. You wake up every day and you can say you're doing what you love to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, if I can do that, I love doing this kind of stuff, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of digging it, right? And I didn't get to do that from when I was your age and being, you know, being 18. I was doing something totally different because that's what everybody told me I was supposed to do, you know, go to college, get a job. And I got a job and I didn't like my job. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> So there was that world. So it was really great. And I know you, uh, you know, you talked about the the FOMO, right? So Mm -hmm. any last words about teens that want to overcome FOMO, that fear of missing out because they're homeschooled? So what would you say? Any, any final words of wisdom there? Well, I think it was exactly what you talked about, which is find something you love doing and then pursue it um, at a very, you know, as far as you want to go at this point, because we have the time we have the flexibility to be able to do that sort of thing. I've met so many homeschoolers who are published authors because they love writing and they're like, why not just publish a book? So they did. And it counts for their school too. Um, and then one of them, you know, she's still publishing, she's 20 and now she's like, you know, she's really getting up there and it's amazing to watch. Um, or, uh, we met a kid at the convention who's in falconry and he's training falcons and as a ninth grader like there's just so Ooh, much cool things so cool. right yeah and if i think for me what made me overcome it because i did struggle with this for for the first two years of high school was i stopped why well, first i realized that homeschooling is not supposed to be like conventional schooling so that op- opened a whole different door for me like okay what is it then what is it supposed to be and that's something you get to decide for yourself about which is something so exciting um and then taking your eyes off of public school so stop comparing yourself to other people and other homeschoolers as well because you know we're we're each made for something very specific we have a specific calling on our lives and in order to pursue that I feel like we do need to focus on ourselves we can be inspired by other people which is why I have you know the podcast obviously but um yeah that's for me it was that it was realizing it's not supposed to be conventional schooling realizing it can still like we can still do prom and graduation and everything that we would want to it's different but it doesn't make it less valuable and we get the opportunity to be to to you know do something that teens normally don't do in high school to explore something we love at a deeper level um like your sunset like you said about your son um being a dancer like that's so cool too it's something so unique it's uh, but you get to explore that as a teenager and discover that now and i always thought you had to wait until you were like 20 or out of college to do the thing you wanted to do but we can do it right now. I mean, we'll never have this much freedom and flexibility and time available to us. Why don't we just That's do for it sure. now? <laughs> yeah. So that those two things I think have been the main uh, uh, overcoming for me is discovering why I homeschool and realizing I'm part of a movement, something bigger than myself, something that's really cool. Um, and uh, taking my eyes off of everyone else and kind of just focusing on what I have and how I've been blessed. The, I think my mom put it really well, you know, it's the abundance mindset. You look for the abundance in your life and don't focus on the lack. Um, and that really does transform the way you view your homeschooling experience, I think. Yeah. Wow. Let's go, mom. That mm-hmm. is great <laughs> advice, you know, and I can hear it in what you're up to in your life. Like you've taken her advice. So good for you. Okay, Nadine. So here's, um, tell people again about how to get to the site. So it's mm-hmm. HS for homeschool, HS high school podcast does dot, I keep saying does because there's the buzz there, dot mm-hmm. buzzsprout.com. 
dot com. Mm-hmm. We'll put the put in the show notes, and then people can find uh, your episodes on there. And then you've got links to different social media. So mm-hmm. I know I saw your, I found your um, your Instagram. What other social media can people, if they want to find out more about you, what else is on there? Yeah, so I am um, also on Facebook, and I have a very very small YouTube channel that I've only posted on twice. I hope maybe over the summer to kind of get that going a little more. Awesome. But you can also just search my podcast on any of the you know regular. Uh, podcasting flat platforms spotify right. App, apple music like no sorry apple podcast <laughs> i always uh-huh. say apple yeah, music. yeah um yeah and i'm on there too so that's awesome all right very good well if it's okay with you you know i love to have people come back and kind of see what you're up to so let's come back again and do this again kind of see how it's so going and what you're up to <laughs> yeah it'd be really great all right well nadine it was absolute pleasure and privilege for me to be able to spend time with you today. So thanks for making your day work to be here. For everybody tuning in to A Plus Parents, as always, I want to thank you and see you next time, everyone. Bye, everyone.